<laughs> so when I first started updating Bill Mollison's work, something occurred to me that was profound. There is a giant ocean-sized hole in Bill Mollison's work. The sea forest, the oceans, they're completely missing from permaculture. And I realized in that moment, knowing that 70% of our world is ocean, is water, that we have missed the boat. And so I spent an enormous amount of time working on this, trying to figure out, trying to understand what is needed to update permaculture, to make it fully holistic, to tie in the oceans. And in that studying, I've come across some very critical and important facts. Number one, we keep comparing climate change to catastrophic events like meteors, asteroids, and volcanic activity, and all these kind of uh, big, huge disasters. But what's going on here is biological. We are doing things biologically. It's the way we're living that's releasing all of this, which actually is very similar to the other climate change events in history that revolved around biology. So what am I talking about? Well, the ocean, the ocean has hosted life that has actually created the oxygen, that has actually created time periods of heat, has created time periods of over-oxygenation, has it swung cold, it swung hot through all these time periods. The ocean biology has been affecting climate. Perhaps the strongest effect on climate is the ocean life. So the fact that we're poised in the oceans, the fact that oceans are suffering so much right now should get us all like a huge wake up call. Because the reality is we need to turn to the oceans again. We need to ramp up the life in the oceans to, ta to trap that carbon. And there is this technology I discovered. In my studies, I talked about how the, the, the coasts are places that are our greatest linchpin for a fact. And yes, for everyone to get involved, that is true. But our greatest linchpin for a fact could be with technology, could be with marine permaculture. Did you know that the heat, the, 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 the warming oceans is in the top layer and that's what's causing the stagnation? The, the engine of the ocean, the upwellings, the colder water exchanging with the top, which is also how it processes the nitrogen and all these very important processes are involved in this, including the carbon process, the carbon cycle. It is all being shut down. But using just simple technology, using, you know, waves and the sun, we can bring colder water up into that warm zone and start that again and have a return of the mineral cycle, a return of the carbon cycle. We'll be able to sink that carbon down to the depths of the ocean where it will remain for thousands of years. We are talking about a real sink. We're talking about a completely new pathway that we haven't even tied in. And we've seen this before in geological history, in Earth's climate history, where we've had a Zola populations take off in the ocean and then sink down in trapping enormous amounts of carbon in the depths of the ocean, causing a massive cooling event to happen. So, can we do this again? Oh yeah, we can grow kelp using these arrays, these marine permaculture arrays where we're bringing that cold water up and we're irrigating with that colder water and literally, you know, drip line irrigation underwater. And then we're growing kelp right there. Then we're bringing in fish. Then we're having the phytoplankton super happy. And then all of the heavier material is dropping down thousands of meters down to the deepest parts of the ocean where it is fully sequestered for thousands of years. We're literally seeing the reversal of the release of carbon. We're seeing deep sequestration. We're seeing massive sequestration. And we could be doing this now. We could be doing this today. And yes, we could be harvesting that. We could be making energy out of it. We could be making food out of it. We could be making a soil amendment and building up the soils on land with it. We could be doing all of the above. But the greatest good the fastest change, the most like the historical climate change that has been fomented by biology on this planet is akin 
to us going out into the middle of the oceans, using marine permaculture, dropping that growth, that excess, that carbonaceous material down to the depths of the ocean where it will be sequestered. And this is not expensive technology. This is simple technology. This is technology that we could set up today, that we could start on today. This is, uh, this is featured in the bo top 10 box office hit in Australia, 2040, a documentary and film talking about what is possible in the future in 2040 and it shows hope and excitement that's featured in this. I recently interviewed Dr. Brian Von Herzen. He is in the, he's the expert behind all this. And I recently interviewed him. You'll be able to see the full interview and learn all the details, all the facts. And get, I'm going to ask all those questions. What are the dangers? What are the risks? What do we What do? We do? You know, we're going to dive into it all. So and keep learning. Get hopeful. Understand that, yes, composting is important. Yes, regenerative uh, ag is, is, is vital, is critical to saving the landscape, restoring the hydrology of the landscapes. Are All these things are so incredibly important. But you know what? The greatest linchpin that we have for facing the carb the, the acidification of the ocean, the overcarbonaceousness of the atmosphere, we can actually reverse all this by partnering with biology in the oceans, by partnering with kelp, phytoplankton, by, by ramping up the health of the oceans, by helping whales, by helping everything on the earth starts with marine permaculture. So if you don't know what it is, you got to learn what perma... What, <laughs> so if you don't know what I'm talking about, you got to check it out. Get really excited because the change is here. We're going to be able to make a difference on land and on sea, and we're going to be able to turn this around. And yes, we're going to have to create resilient shelters, resilient forests, resilient gardens, you know, you name it, to, to deal with the tipping points we've already set in motion from climate change. And also just naturally occurring things that happen like those asteroids, like, you know, those meteors, like those, you know, sunspots or lack thereof, all those things, we have to have resilient ecologies to face that. And so we need to bring back the life that all that carbon represents because everything that is carbon that we're talking about that's, oh, we have too much this, oh, we have too much that all over the place, that's just the life we're missing from our, our actual ecologies. That's the fish. That's the soil. That's the soil life. That's the animals. That's all the mass extinction. It's just if you flip it, it becomes life. And then we've got the stability for our planet. Then we've got abundance on into the future. And that's what I want for you. That's what I want for everyone. I'm Matt Powers. Grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively. And check out marine permaculture. <laughs>